Hey Jody here, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Let's do it. This video is brought to you by my online welding accessories store at WeldMonger.com. We're going to TIG weld some chromoly tubing today with a wall thickness of about 063. First thing to do is to clean it. It sure does weld a lot better if you get that light mill scale coating down clean to clean bright metal. Chromoly tubing doesn't take a very complicated or fancy machine uh, to do a good job on it. In fact, you, you really only need DC. It helps to have high frequency start, but today I'm using an AC-DC machine. So I've got things clamped down, little or no gap with these coped joints, and I'm going to get some nice small tacks on here. I'm not going to show you all. I'll just show you the one. Kind of stab that filler metal in there. Try not to get too big of a tack because you will like your tacks to be a little bit smaller than the final weld that way you can go over them consume them and you won't be able to tell where they are here's the basic rundown here a number 12 ceramic furic cup with 25 to 30 CFH of argon I'm using a 332nd 2% lanthanated electrode and 045 ER ADSD2 filler metal there are some other options for filler metal uh, but today I'm just using the ER80SD2 mainly because I happen to have 045 on hand and I prefer to use that for this uh, 063 wall tubing. So I'm going to get several tacks on here so it doesn't move around or gaps open up or anything like that before I weld it. And then we'll weld it out. We'll show some good arc shots and uh, talk about whatever comes along. Now this is this is pretty easy stuff right here on the bench. Most of the time these type joints would be done up in the air somewhere in a bad position where you're not that comfortable and you're squeezing the foot pedal between your knees and things like that but for the, for the purposes of filming I'm just doing it on the bench here so I can get arc shots and uh, it's really hard to film up in position so hopefully this will be still instructive even though it's right here in front of me so the number 12 cup is doing a fantastic job look you see this discoloration following the cup what that shows you is just how big a argon envelope we have going there. I'll show that again in just a second after this arc shot's done, but I'm taking it all the way down into that intersection there, tying into the tack, and then coming on back up. And I'm, I'm not like trying to be a speed demon here, but I'm also not trying to go too slow. I don't want to cook it. But the cup is, is doing a really nice job in keeping everything from graying up, keeping everything with some color in it. I'll show you again in just a second that argon envelope of the cup shielding moving along here okay you can see right about right about here you can see some discoloration creep into the area but all that silver area there that means it's it's being covered by argon that's a good cup okay so that's one run there and I'm just gonna try to weld this thing out in sequences I'm gonna let it cool for a little while here before I come back to it that's something that the trophy truck guys do they'll, they'll a lot of times make two passes They'll make one pass and then they'll skip around and, and come back to it after it's cooled off. Okay, three quarter inch stick out here and that really comes in handy for these, for these tight angles like this. In fact, if I was doing this up in the air, I would probably clamp some aluminum foil to the back side of that to trap argon. Just gives you a little bit better, better shielding. In this case, I don't have to do it. It's kind of trapping by being on the table like it is. But having that ability to have a nice long stick out, easily you can, you can have a three quarter inch stick out. I have stuck it out quite a bit longer than that before too and still got good shielding. You just have to pump your, your CFH volume up just a little bit. Here I think I'm running somewhere between 25 and 30 CFH. All right, I'm not gonna show the entire thing but I think you get the drift here. Another arc shot here. You know, you're not going to have the optimum torch angle when you're welding odd shaped things like this. So you go, I'm going down with a weird angle and then I'm pulling the puddle back up. But it works out. Always taper off nice and slowly on chromoly joints. It's a lot more crack sensitive than mild steel, for instance. So you want to taper off your amperage nice and slow. And the reason for that is you could leave a very small little crater crack, also called a fish eye, and that'll propagate into a bigger crack, and you don't want a crack, ever. All right, let's do a little Q&A here. 
you know, one question that came in on an earlier video that I did about 4130 chromoly is why is it not welded with 4130 wire? Why welded with ER70 wire or ER80 wire? And this, this argument's been going on for quite a while, but now here we are, 2018, there's been lots of studies done by a lot of smart people, lots of cut and etch, slice and dice, micro hardness traverse, tensile pulls, etc. long spreadsheets made, and now the jury's in. You know, ER70 is, provides acceptable results, so does ER80SD2. And uh, both can be used. You might, you might have a specific application where you, you need the ER80, that little bit of extra strength, but most of the time, from just when I hear in the industry of guys that build trophy trucks, monster trucks, guys that build kit planes and all that, ER70S-2 is, uh, is perfectly okay. The strength, the strength is in the design on, on chromoly fuselage uh, aircraft frames, as well as trophy truck chassis, roll cages, where you've got all these cluster joints coming in, the triangulation, the gussets and everything, that's where the strength is. You're not relying on, you're not relying on an extra 10,000 PSI of strength of filler metal as much as you are the design. Most of the failures we see in these type of joints anyway are in the heat affected zone, not in the weld metal. So, so the studies are in, ER70S2 or ER80SD2 are both good. Sometimes I believe the ER80 flows a little bit better but it just depends if you've got a gap or not and some things like that. Why not weld it with 4130 rod? 4130 rod, that's a match for the tubing as far as the chemistry goes. But you can get a fairly brittle microstructure or a, you know, a slight lack of ductility and you don't want that. You, want, you need these things to give under flexing conditions. You need them to give and not crack. Okay, that's, that's, a, really important, that's a really important attribute of a weld is the ductility. Strength is important, but when you can achieve strength by engineering and design and still get a ductile weld, now that's what you want. Why the number 12 Furic cup? Well, it's not, so, it's not as important on a single pass weld, but a lot of the welds that are done on trophy trucks and, uh, and monster trucks and motorsports are thick enough wall thickness that they do two passes. So they do a root pass with a small wire, let it cool, come across with a second pass. With a big cup like a 12, that second pass is going to go in way better. Lack of oxidation lets that metal flow in way better than having, than, than having it grayed up and then having to try to clean that off with a wire brush. You know, if you've done, ever done a two-pass weld where the first pass is grayed up, that second pass is all squirrely, swimming around, it's hard to make it look good. That's really where the benefit comes in in using a, a 12 or bigger cup. I think this 12, this 12 Furic cup that I use in this video is... Uh, just about perfect for this application. It only requires maybe 5 CFH more than a number 8 gas lens cup. It allows a really long stick out for getting up in those tight tight corners, tight crotches of the of the uh, cluster joints. And it just it, and for two pass welds, you, it, the second pass goes in way better. The setup that comes with most TIG welding machines when you buy it, just a standard cup with a long tip and you can shorten that up with a button. It's, it's better, but it's not ideal for getting in tight spots like chromoly clusters. So I'm putting the stubby gas lens kit on here, and uh, that's gonna, just, gonna, just to show you what a difference it makes in the overall size of the head of the torch. Now I can use the small style gas lens cups that fit on number nine style torches and water-cooled torches. Just makes it a lot more maneuverable. And the new ceramic Furic number 12 just threads right on the uh, the stubby thing with no o-rings or anything required so now very easily i can just switch from a pink cup to a nice big 12 cup and have this long stick out for certain applications so you can learn more about the stubby gas lens kit the furic number 12 along with all kinds of other specialty gas lens kits and cups tig fingers and things like that at my store at weldmonger.com i appreciate you watching we'll see you next time